Good morning, boys and girls. We haven't had a uh, children's lesson here at church and uh, Sunday school for those of you who are coming to Sunday school. And for our preschooler and daycare parents and families, we haven't had our Jesus time either here at St. Paul. So we're going to do that today. I'm kind of fresh off of a Palm Sunday uh, service here that uh, you can watch on YouTube. I think it, it probably should be there, and I would invite you and your family to do that. But uh, this, this portion of the video here is for all of our children. And uh, today, we want to talk about the resurrection eggs. You see that? The resurrection eggs. And some of you are very familiar with that because we've got a dozen colored eggs here. And these dozen colored eggs all tell us the story of Jesus. And maybe this is kind of a good point to remember. You know, here these days now you're probably coloring eggs at home. And you know why we, why we color eggs at Easter time? Why do we talk about the egg? Well, the egg is a, is a sign of new life. Because just as regular eggs have, you know, a yolk in there, and when the chicken lays the egg, well, there's new life in there. And so in a sense, God is giving us new life at Easter. And with these 12 eggs, we want to talk about all that Jesus did for our salvation. Okay? So, let's open up the very first egg. If you look at this egg, those of you who remember, it's the donkey. Okay? And the donkey is all about Palm Sunday. Jesus rides on the donkey into the city of Jerusalem. And he's welcomed as a king. And while the people were hoping that Jesus was going to bring about, you know, a wonderful kingdom where, where the Romans would be driven out and they would be powerful once again, Jesus comes to bring us freedom from our sins. Jesus comes to wash away all of our sins. And I've got a picture here. A picture that talks about what Palm Sunday is. You can see the people around Jesus. Jesus is walking on the donkey. Palm branches are there. Everyone is excited that Jesus is coming as a king. But Jesus is a different kind of king. He comes to rule from a cross. And on that cross, Jesus comes to save us. And that's what the wonderful reminder of the stained glass window here reminds us of. Jesus comes to suffer to die so that we can be members of his kingdom forevermore. Okay. Now, the next egg that we have, you'll remember, remember that? The 30, or the, the 30 pieces of silver. We only got three coins here. But remember the coins? Judas, one of Jesus' disciples, agreed to betray Jesus. In other words, to turn him over to his enemies. And they made a deal. They made a deal that when Jesus was alone, away from all the crowds, Judas would hand Jesus over to his enemies. So, very bad thing that Judas did. Okay. The next day talks about the cup or the chalice. This was the special meal that Jesus had with his disciples on the evening of Monday, Thursday. So this coming Thursday, we celebrate the fact that Jesus has this special meal. And I've got a picture of that. Here's Jesus with that chalice, with that cup. And he's having a special meal with his disciples. That this was the Passover meal that the disciples were a part of, that Jesus was celebrating. But Jesus also gave us, at that time, the very first communion. He instituted his body and blood for our forgiveness. And so Jesus takes the bread. You see the bread down there? And he says, this is my body, which is given for you. Then Jesus takes the cup, the cup that's there, and he says, this is my blood. Drink of it, all of you. This is shed, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. So when we come to church, we receive this special gift of Jesus. That as Jesus died on the cross here, Jesus makes it real for us. Jesus gives us his very body and blood, in, with, and under the bread and the wine, for us to eat and to drink, so that the Holy Spirit can continue to comfort us 
and guide us and strengthen us with this special meal. Okay. The next egg has the praying hands. Remember the praying hands? Jesus is praying after that special meal. Jesus goes to a special garden. And if you look at our altar, we have a picture of Jesus doing that. Look at it. Jesus' hands are folded. And he's asking God for help as he is, knows that he's going to have to suffer and die for the sins of the world. So Jesus prays. And he prays, not my will, but your will be done. Jesus knows that suffering and dying for the sins of the world is going to bring him into a death that is unlike any other. That's what makes Good Friday good. Because Jesus embraces that kind of death we we'll never ever have to experience. So Jesus folds his hands and he prays in the Garden of Gethsemane that his Heavenly Father would be with him. The next day deals with the whip. Okay? In the Garden of Gethsemane, after Jesus was done praying, Judas and Jesus' enemies came and they arrested him. And they took him. They took him to the palace of the high priest. And they started to whip him and to make his life very, very painful and very hard. So the whip reminds us all the suffering that Jesus endured for you and for me. The next day is the crown of thorns. Remember that? This was the crown of thorns that the soldiers put on Jesus' head. They heard that Jesus was the king of the Jews, and so they thought, oh, that'll be fun. We can have some fun with Jesus. We'll make, some real, we'll make him a real crown that he won't forget. And we'll make it out of thorns and we'll shove it on his head so that his head begins to bleed. So Jesus suffered some more as he endured all of that from the soldiers and from his enemies. The next day brings us to the nails. If you look real carefully, you'll see that this cross is made out of three nails. One, two, and three. Okay? And these are the nails that were put on, that were nailed Jesus' body to the cross, on his two hands and on his feet. So Jesus was crucified. Jesus was declared a criminal. Jesus deserved, Jesus, as far as they were concerned, he deserved to die because he made himself out to be something that they believed he couldn't be, and that was the Son of God. Next thing has to do with that. Remember that? Those are the little dice. The dice. Now, it's dice is what the soldiers used. The soldiers took Jesus' clothes, and then they started to play a game. Who's going to get Jesus' clothes? You know, clothing back in Jesus' time was a very valuable thing. So they played a game to see who was going to win Jesus' clothes. The next day is the spear. Remember the spear? After Jesus died, a soldier came and he took the spear and he put it right up there. You can see there's a little red spot on Jesus' body there. And that was to make sure that he was dead. Okay, so they used that terrible spear as Jesus endured that. The next day is the cloth. This was the cloth that Jesus' friends used. Remember, it reminds us that they took Jesus' body down from, from the cross, and then they wrapped it up in strips of cloth, and then they put Jesus in a special cave called a sepulcher. They put that sepulcher in there, and they wrapped Jesus' body up in, the, in those strips of cloth, and they put spices in the cloth so that it would be, so that Jesus' body would smell good. The next day is the stone. The stone. Jesus' body was laid in that special cave, that sepulcher, and then they took the stone 
and they rolled it in front of the opening of the cave so that no one could get in it. And in fact, the enemies of Jesus were so afraid about Jesus that they had the, gate, they had the grave watched. In other words, there were soldiers around the grave to make sure that no one would enter that grave and try to steal Jesus' body away. But you know what? No one had to steal Jesus' body. And that brings us to the very last day. The very last day reminds us that the grave is empty. Jesus rose from the dead. And that's what this wonderful picture here, our last thing, last picture, reminds us of. Jesus rose from the dead. And when we talk about Jesus rising from the dead, we're not talking about Jesus being kind of a happy memory, or we remember him when we think about uh, maybe a nice thought or a, a picture of him. Jesus is physically risen from the dead. And as he's physically risen from the dead, he says, because I live, you will live also. So that's the story of Holy Week. The story of Holy Week that Jesus did for us. So why don't we fold our hands, let's bow our heads, and let's pray. Well, dear Lord Jesus, we thank you that you endured everything for our salvation. We can't even begin to imagine all the suffering and pain that you endured as you paid for our sins and the sins of the world. Help us, dear Lord, then, to believe and to trust that by your sacrifice, by all that you have done, you have washed our sins away. And when we are troubled by what we do, for the times when we get angry, when we get mad, when we don't get along with our brothers or sisters or our dad and moms, that we need to take our sins to you. And you have promised to wash them clean. Help us then, dear Lord, to be good helpers during this time. And to pray and to ask Jesus to lift all of all this moment that we're all experiencing so that we can go back to our regular lives. But above all, dear Jesus, bring us the joy and the comfort of your resurrection. You have promised us that we will live, not only just in this world, but we will live with you forever. May that then be our Easter hope as we commend ourselves to your care. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So I hope you and your family are going to have a good Easter making lots of Easter eggs and that you're going to have a nice Easter dinner at your house and I'm hoping too all of you are going to be good helpers in the house don't be a whiner but be a helper don't just say to your parents oh I'm just so bored all the time okay there's plenty that you can do it can help so uh, put a smile on your face the Lord Jesus still loves you uh, and before long we'll all be together here at St. Paul's once again so a happy Easter to one and all thank you